first and third season are great. The first season's amazing, but the third season's pretty great too on its own. Cool show. No, that was uh, The Outsider. Castle Rock is the Hulu one, right? Hey, but how about this story? I know who Yo, you are. Yo, he's got are. the gif. And I saw what you did. Just, this is the thumbnail. That's it. That's all you get. Do you click on the video? Samson sat in the room watching and listening. Do cats eat no peanut movement, butter? I feel like peanut no butter is bad for cats. His prey was dead. Like, wouldn't it like fucking he suffocate them? They're fucking airways, which is small. He knew when he butter. held her head between his hands and heard her neck snap. I don't know if that, that would have any effect on that. Been accomplished. Just... But still, he waited, like he always did, just a bit, just in case. Uh... He liked to watch. He enjoyed looking at what he had done. Looking at the corpse, which he had. Maybe this isn't the best uh, story. <laughs> oh, this isn't the same guy. That's why. Some of these are good, but sometimes they get too fucking weird. Yeah, I just didn't want to be like murdering some naked lady in the story. Harold too? A cry in the darkness. I like how the dude is always bald. And it looks like he's wearing like a cult uniform. Like what is he wearing? Some Star Trek shit? Adam Dent was not a man who you would call lively or amusing. In Adam no way Dent. could it be said that he was a pleasant joker or a hair. silly heart. This guy's got hair. Adam was not a cruel or mean-spirited man. He just saw the world as an unpleasant and even at times vile place. This all changed, however, the day he met Mel Reinhardt. Where Adam was dull and cynical, Mel, Reinhardt. Mel was playful and full of life. She loved to tell jokes, play pranks, and act silly. It wasn't long before Mel's joy and love of life began to show in Adam as well. Well, good Life for is very short, she would tell him. Enjoy what we have, for it is all we have, and every day should be treated as so. During the two years he had known her, Adam was changed by Mel. She had softened his heart and allowed him to feel something he had never thought possible. Her smile and her laugh were two things Yo, he look at these could not people. have come for the cruel, sad look world a 90s music he once video. thought he lived in. Now... Life was better. Life was good because Mel was in it. And on the anniversary of their meeting at the same cafe where they had met two years prior, Look at that ice cream. Adam proposed. Oh yes, of course I will marry you, Mel said, her smile melting his heart. Oh Adam, thank you. You have made me so happy. No, he said. It yeah, is I, need I that ice cream who right have been now. made happy. Blessed by the gift and the treasure, which is you. The couple spent the next few weeks discussing their wedding plans Damn, and the Adam's many wonderful game. things they would spend their lives doing. Then one day, 
Mel did not show up to meet Adam for lunch at the I've cafe. I've fallen in love with your bucket hat. It was not like her to simply miss their date without giving Adam notice. Maybe she just needs a little space, he thought. Will Voth be my all, wife? we have been seeing each other a lot lately. But when another day passed and Adam did not see Mel, he began to worry. Perhaps she is ill, he thought, and went to visit her at her home. Herbie eyes? At the Reinhardt residence, Adam was greeted by Mel's mother, Mary, at the door. Is Mel ill? he asked. I have not seen or heard from her in two days now. Mary Reinhardt looked at Adam with a deep sadness in her eyes. Adam, I don't know how to tell you this, but Mel is gone. Gone? What? He asked. Gone where? What do you mean she's gone? My daughter is dead. She said. Isn't this the same story? I lost her two nights ago. Oh, no. My child. My child is dead. Why didn't anyone tell us, poor guy? Adam stood stunned. The shock overwhelmed him so that he could not speak. Dude, 20% slowly, of spooky Mary's stories, stories are just and the story. Shattered. For Falling ghost into girl. Arms, he let out a wail of sorrow and pain. Time went like by, and on, Adam's poor friends man. and family tried to comfort him the best they could. She's like, I was a ghost. But it was to no avail. Mel was gone. The light in Happened his life had died out. This and guy, with it the guy in the other the story. Which had once filled him. Dan Aykroyd. Six months after Mel's death, I mean, is that Adam himself what? was found dead beneath a bridge near his home. Damn, Adam. Police had ruled death a suicide. The Dent and Reinhardt families met each other and talked about Adam and Mel and how tragically short their lives had been. And this is where the story he just kind of faded ended, away. But it didn't. What? 25 years after the deaths of Adam and Mel, the police received a very strange letter. Was not expecting that twist. The letter explained that someone was in desperate need of help right away and an address was given. The letter was not signed. When the police reached the residence, they discovered that it was the home of Mary Reinhardt. She's still wearing the same fucking shirt. Mary seemed surprised when the police explained the letter and told the years police later. that she and her son were perfectly fine and that somebody must have been playing some kind of joke. Just to be sure, the officers asked if they could search the house, and Mary agreed. Oh my During god, it was search, her. They were approached by Mary's son, Stanley, who asked them if they would please search behind the family portrait. When the officers removed Are you fucking the portrait from me? the wall, they discovered a door sealed with several padlocks. What the fuck? They quickly broke the locks and forced open the door. A large amount of dirt and dust fell to the floor, and the officers pulled back at the foul smell which filled the air. Within the room, what they discovered was a hauntingly gruesome sight. Chained what? to the bed was the ghastly, emaciated, and bewildered figure of Mel Reinhardt. How? There's bugs on the wall? Stanley told the police that when Mel had told her mother that she and Adam were to be married, her mother greatly disapproved and forbid the marriage to happen. Mel told her straight out that she was going to marry Adam no matter what she said. For days, Mary Reinhardt tried to get her daughter to change her mind, but Mel adamantly refused. Feeling she what had no the other fuck powers, kind of twist is Mary this? locked Mel in her room and told her that she would have to stay inside until she accepted her wishes. Despite the promise of release if she would simply bow to her mother's demands, Mel refused to give in. The biggest question I have is, what is the husband wearing? Is he a cult leader or what? Several days passed, and her mother cut a small hole into the door and allowed her food and water and nothing else. According to Stanley, like, who is despite that guy? their mother's cruelty and torture, Mel never gave in and would bang on the wall. An unfortunate story. Charlie was yeah, I like the ones that are just kind of more not 
people being trapped in whenever he was doing like, some rooms. activity with the other kids like he maybe would this never harry miss potter a looking one to make them feel foolish at times he would even put down some of the camp counselors correcting them whenever they would make a mistake or challenging their knowledge of nature and history bats are not actually blind camp he said once, after somebody used the phrase blind as a bat in fact oh, he said no. There are some bats that can see better than you can. On another occasion, when he noticed one of the camp counselors baiting a mouse trap with cheese, he made it a point to say that they would have more luck trying a piece of fruit or even an insect, since mice don't even really like cheese. The others at the camp didn't really appreciate all of Charlie's <clears throat> advice. They knew he was much more interested in sounding superior to them rather than helping out. What kind of One camp morning, name is Charlie Camp was Owl the Eye? The and then the logo is just a fucking eyeball? Mess. What? When the trio found themselves at a small lake, they stopped to take a break. This is Lake Anesta, said Dennis. We better get out of yeah, here. Yeah, the logo is just going to be uh, an eyeball. Charlie smiled. <laughs> because of the wild. It looks like a fucking wobby? olive or yeah, like a kiwi Dennis or something. Answered. Nah, we might be safe, said Ray. Everybody knows that the Wabi Wabi sleeps during the day and only comes out at night. The Wabi Charlie Wabi. couldn't contain himself any longer and busted out laughing right then and there. Please tell me you are not serious. Of course the Wabi Wabi isn't real. That's just a fictitious story about a fictitious creature that those people at the camp tell kids. No, it isn't, said Dennis. Didn't you hear? Some teenagers were swimming back here one night and it got them. Swallowed them whole. Charlie almost fell over with laughter. He walked over to the boy and put a hand on his shoulder. Let me explain a little something to you, my friend. It is not possible that one animal could exist for all the decades that this thing was supposedly spotted. <laughs> put the oh, fuck Oh, yeah, smarts. Ray oh, God. Well, did you ever think there could be more than one? Charlie walked over and placed his hand on his shoulder. How about you don't touch me? Then I think, Otter. my dear friend, if that were the case, that it should be fairly easy to spot one. Take a gander. He pointed out towards the lake. This lake, as you can see, is not very large. If a number of giant reptilian creatures Uniform lived here, trees. I suppose that it would not be such a chore to find and categorize them, now would it? So then, what happened to the teenagers? asked Dennis. Ah, yes, the mysterious teenage casualties. Were there any witnesses to this sad event? Nobody said they saw it, just that it happened, right? I don't know, the Potter. The kids who got devoured certainly aren't talking. So how do we know what happened, huh? Also, who were these unfortunate teens? What were their names? Where did they live? Can I talk with their family members? Show me their obituaries. In fact, show me the newspaper article that talks about a group of teenagers getting eaten alive by a giant monster that lives in Lake Anesta. It could be a dinosaur, said Dennis. Damn, this guy's a dick. One who survived the Ice Age. Charlie had to take off his glasses to wipe the tears from his eyes. Oh my god. After replacing the glasses, he said, First thing, the Ice Age did not kill the dinosaurs. Second thing, the last dinosaur died 65 million years ago. Could we please try to stay in the realm of science and not pseudoscience at least? Oh yeah, smarts. What about the Loch Ness Monster? Said Ray. Yeah, what about it? Some say that's a dinosaur that survived the Ice Age. Something called, uh, uh, a plesiosaur. Yeah, you got it. Uh, yeah, what you said. Charlie sighed. Stop touching me, My Potter. dear friend, what part of 65 million years did you not understand? And I think you had best get your ears checked, because I already told you that the Ice Age did not kill the dinosaurs. As a matter of fact, you best get there your have ears been checked. several Ice Ages. Some while the dinosaurs still existed. And for the last time, no teenagers at any time were savagely chewed up and swallowed in this lovely, serene lake. The most dangerous thing you might come across here is a disgruntled perch. <laughs> Dennis and Ray began to grow angry at the way Charlie was belittling them. 
All right, there. These, hair, these haircuts are amazing, too. If you think you know it all, up, then you go swim over to that large rock out there in the middle of the lake. Oh, but the sun is still high in the sky, said Charlie. Our magical beast is sleeping down there, remember? Well, we can't wait until nighttime. And I don't want to, Dennis Get in, said. Potter. This is stupid, said Charlie. Even after everything I've explained to you, you still think this thing exists in this lake. Yo, Did you he, ever take I into account hope he gets that there eat, couldn't possibly be enough fish? This thing right here is going to get up and eat that, isn't it? This, like, lump right here. Right? Large enough fish, for that matter, to sustain oh, an entire family of dinosaurs in this little lake, or even one dinosaur. And what about when winter comes? How would our friends survive the freezing temperatures? Well, maybe it isn't a dinosaur, said Dennis. We just assumed that. Again, Charlie sighed. <laughs> the other kid just fucking punches him. All right, he said. He removed his shoes and shirt and began walking towards the edge of the dock. Are we really going to let him do this? asked Dennis. After Charlie swam halfway to the boulder, Ray called him back. Okay, smarts, never mind. We believe you. Don't be crazy now. That Just boulder get back is the here. monster, I'm calling it. Don't be absurd. It Charlie is. It has to be. I've never been safer. He continued swimming and eventually made it to the large boulder in the middle of the lake. He stood there, arms crossed and smiling. Well, he shouted back. Like I said, no wobby wobby. And no Nessie, no Sasquatch, no unicorns, nothing. These things exist only in the imaginations of fools. Ray and Dennis looked at Look each at the other dull now, pineapple fucking foolish. juice. Of course, now the things Charlie had told them began to make sense. Okay, Charlie said. Can I come back over now? At that moment, the Hell ground yeah. around Dennis and Ray began to shake. Followed by a loud, piercing shriek, the tree shook and out stomped a large, ferocious creature. Oh, I thought it was going creature. to be the boulder. Before the two boys could even move, the beast smashed in Ray's Whoa! skull with a fierce blow, killing him instantly. Dennis screamed and ran for his life, but the creature grabbed him and lifted him up off of the ground. Flinging Dennis over its shoulders and dragging Ray's lifeless corpse behind him. The monstrosity disappeared back into the woods. I didn't think it would kill them. Charlie simply stood on his rock. That would kill him. And looked on. Dumbfounded. That thing just punched right through his head. The hell's this one? Wallum Ballum? Once there was an old log cabin, which sat on the grounds of a rich man named Logan Be quiet. Baker. Mr. Baker bought the Logan. some years ago, without realizing that the small cabin which sat upon it was haunted. But he soon found Is it out 18 minutes? when all the men he hired to work the land came running back to him in terror, saying that something evil lurked on his land. And that they were never going I don't know if I want to listen to this guy for 18 minutes because his audio is really not good. Like, barely audible. I mean, his, these stories are pretty fucking brutal. I wasn't expecting it to get like that. The guests. <laughs> the guests. A young man and his wife were on a trip to visit his mother. Usually they arrived in time for supper. I swear to God, I used to like play video games. And now it was guy. getting dark. His voice so is they so decided familiar. to look for a place to stay overnight and go in the morning. Just off the road, they saw a small house in the woods. Maybe they rent rooms, the wife said, so they stopped to ask. An elderly man and woman came to the door. They didn't rent rooms, they said, 
but they would be glad to have them stay overnight as their guests. Fuck they that. had plenty of room, and they would enjoy the company. The old woman made coffee and brought out some cake, and the four of them talked for a while. Then the young couple were taken to their room. They again explained that they wanted to pay for this, but the old man said he would not accept any money. The young couple got up early the next morning before their host had awakened. On a table near the front door, they left an envelope with some money in it for the room. Then they went on to the next town. They stopped in a restaurant and had breakfast. When they told the owner where they had stayed, he was shocked. That can't be, he said. That house burned to the ground, and the man and the woman who lived there died in the fire. Oh, the young couple no. could not believe it, so they went back to the house. Only now there was no house. All they found was a burnt-out shell. They stood staring at the was room, tree? trying to understand what had happened. Then the wife Bamboo screamed, tree? and the rubble was a badly burned table, like the one they had seen by the front door. And on the table was the envelope they had left in the morning. Damn. You know what that kind of reminds me of? There is no such thing as a coincidence. The fact that you're watching this video means you are energetically aligned with me and this message. Your thoughts create your reality. But you already knew that, yet you still live a life that you oh, dread. Excuse me. Ah! That is because when you visualize your dream life, you unconsciously believe that it is unrealistic. What do you think they're freaking out about? What do you come for? There was an old woman who lived all by herself. Dude, this voice is crazy. She was very lonely. Sitting in the kitchen one night, she said, <clears throat> Oh, I wish I had some company. No sooner had she spoken uh -huh. than down the chimney tumbled two feet from which the flesh had rotted. The old woman's eyes bulged with terror. Then two legs dropped to the heart <laughs> and attached themselves to the feet. Then a body tumbled down. Then two arms and a man's head. As the old woman watched, the parts came together into a great gangling <laughs> man. <laughs> the man danced around and around the room. Faster and faster he went. Then he stopped and he looked into her eyes. What do you come for? She asked in a small voice that shivered and shook. What do I come for? He said. I come for you. Yeah, I love this is going into the best of. Hell yeah. Then they drove way too long. I come for you. What do you come? What do you come for? No, I think I think it's spelled C O M E. I think you might be uh well, I don't think it's that kind. It's I think it's spelled C O M E. You look it up in the dictionary. Backwoods Shack. The town of Miller's Creek was a small town with some nice residents, except for one town drunk named Alan Marshall. Why is his hand Alan in the was bowl? A quiet man who kept most oh, of like peanuts or something. And only went into town to get his drinks. He lived in a shack deep in the backwoods and did not like anyone or anything Juicy shack? to come near it. And if something did, well, 
that thing was never heard from again. A ranger named John, who had arrested Alan several times for getting into bar fights, that looks like an asshole. decided to inspect the shack. So when he saw Alan in the bar, John went to Alan's shack. <laughs> it took him a long while to find it in those woods. Why are you in my shack? But eventually he did and broke inside. The fuck? When he turned the lights on, he gasped with fear. He found bones fuck. scattered all across the floor and human skin rugs. At the sight of this, he turned and ran. I like that running face. right into Alan, in Good fact. Face. Who had just been returning home. Alan stared down at John with oh hatred my God. in his eyes. He pulled out a hunting knife and lunged at John. But John pulled out his pistol and fired. He shot Alan in the shoulder and he let out a cry of pain. Dropping this is like Rocky Raccoon. John took off running. Now in the black mountain hills off the cutter, there lived a young boy named Rocky Raccoon. And they sent a group of John's fellow rangers out to find Alan. But Alan was nowhere same story. in sight. And they decided that he had probably fell over dead somewhere from the loss of blood. They then burned down the shack and all of the horrors inside. A few weeks later, John was sitting outside his own cabin when he noticed a figure walk out of the woods and start making its way towards him. Hey, buddy, he called out. But the man did not reply and kept walking towards him. When the man got close enough, John recognized him. It was Alan. John couldn't believe his eyes. It was Alan. sure Alan had perished due to his wound. He started to reach for his pistol, but Alan pulled out his hunting knife and sank it deep into John's stomach. It's not when the rangers chair, found John's body, he was in so many pieces that they weren't even sure that it was John they had found. They looked all over for John's Damn, John, but never found him. They looked everywhere. What do you think happened to him? The thing. The thing. Rocky Raccoon is a Beatles song. Ted Martin and Sam Miller were good friends. They spent a lot of time together. On this particular night, they were sitting on a fence near the post office talking Yo, about shirt. one thing and another. A there was shirt? a field of turnips it's across sick. the road. Suddenly, they saw something crawl out of the field and stand up. It looked like a man, but in the dark it was hard to tell for sure. They don't care and it at was all. gone. But then it appeared again. It walked halfway across the road, then turned around and went back into the field. Then it came out a third time and started towards them. By now, Ted and Sam were scared, and they started running. But when they finally stopped, they decided they were being foolish. They weren't sure what had scared them, so they decided to go back and get a better look. That's Pretty when they soon they to saw run. it, for it was coming to meet them. It was wearing black pants, a white shirt, and black suspenders. Sam said, I'm going to try and touch it, then we'll know if it's real. <laughs> he walked up to it and peered into its face. It had bright, penetrating I'm going eyes to try sunk to touch deep it. in its That's head. How I know it it's looked real. like a skeleton. Uh -huh. Ted took one look and screamed, and again he and Sam ran, but this time the skeleton followed them. When they got to Ted's house, they stood in the doorway and watched it. It stayed out in the road for a while, then it disappeared. A year That's later, it. Ted got sick and died. What? Toward the end, Sam sat up with him every night. The night Ted died, Sam said he looked just like the skeleton. Then he just disappeared. What? One night, we saw a thing after we were doing drugs. The frog. You ready for this one? 
Tara was walking home from school, I love she thought she'd take a shortcut through a field. The fuck she is that loved shirt? the countryside, so peaceful and calm and nostalgic. I love the happy It wasn't endings. until she heard a disgusting squelch under her Why foot she that she realized shirt? too late that she had trespassed into a private horse paddock. Snarling and cursing in disgust, Tara took off her shoe and limped over to a small duck pond nearby. Kneeling on the bank, she dunked the sole of her shoe into the water and scrubbed at the dung with a dock leaf. Tara gingerly flicked the wet leaf away when her shoe was cleaned. Just as she was standing on one leg putting her shoe back on, she noticed a frog sitting nearby amongst the bulrushes, incubating a handful of frog spawn. Tara was disgusted by frogs. In a flash, she put her shoe back on and threw a handful of slurry at the frog. Damn, bitch. Slurry plopped in the water right next to the frog. The frog hardly reacted, but jumped into the water after the slurry, leaving the frog spawn unattended. In bitterness and disgust, Tara plunged her foot into the pond and stomped on the frog spawn, crushing <gasps> and grinding them. Ooh. After the ruined frog Isn't spawn her foot be all over wet, with though? dirt, Tara hobbled away from the pond, picking her way carefully through the horse dung. Little did she know whole time she was limping away, she was being watched very carefully and very sinisterly by a pair of frog eyes peeking above <laughs> the surface like periscopes. Like a pair of periscopes. That night, Tara lay awake in bed, feeling slightly guilty about the way she had treated the frog spawn. Just as she was on the brink of dozing off, she heard a very faint and light tapping at her bedroom door. She answered the door armed with the fly swatter, afraid it would be a mouse. She was really afraid of all small critters. Tara yanked Damn, open the pussy. door and raised the swatter to strike, only to find that there was no mouse there. There, sitting on the carpet, its cheeks inflating and deflating like balloons. <laughs> a small, <laughs> olive green frog. Tara began to get scared as she recognized that it was the same frog. Just she takes a gun out. Slurry at in the pond. Fucking shoots her. Tara swiftly slammed the door shut, hoping she would hear the sound <clears throat> of the frog hopping away. But she didn't. She hastily reached over and propped the chair under the doorknob, <laughs> and squatted down on the floor to peer <laughs> under the gap. There was a dark wet stain on the carpet where the frog it had been, up, bitch. but the frog appeared to have disappeared. Not Listen, daring bitch. to take the chair away, I know Tara what you did to my spot. Back into bed, only to feel her head lie down on a hard, wet lump. Terry yelled and leaped out of bed. Sitting in the middle of her pillow was the frog. The frog croaked. And to Tara's surprise, she could understand what it was saying. You squashed my children. It croaked eerily. You squashed my frog spawn. <laughs> Tara's Whoa. room was suddenly filled with the sound of croaking and riveting and Hundreds of hideous little deformed frogs appeared out of nowhere. Tara shrieked as the frogs pelleted towards her and pounced on her, covering her all over. In her frightened confusion, she tumbled backwards through the open window, rolled off the porch roof, and fell into the garden below. She did. Instead of dying, though, Tara found herself hundreds of sizes smaller than her <gasps> usual self. All of the hideous frogs had gone to her relief. A horrifying she thought to a struck frog. Tara. To see if what she was thinking was true, she tried to speak, but her words only came <gasps> out as a loud croak. She tried to walk forward, but found herself hopping forward like an Olympic athlete. A frightened Tara hopped out of the garden and over the fields and meadows until she came to the pond where she had first encountered the frog. She knew she must be an idiot to go back there after what had happened, but it was the safest so place lots of the for story, frog apparently. self to be, and there wasn't any other rivers or ponds or reservoirs nearby. The countryside was full of adders and crestals and other frog-eating predators. Tara nervously and hastily <gasps> hastened back into a patch of yellow irises as she saw a fox dart by. 
I don't think a hoping fox a gives a shit a about a frog. Hoping she would wake up back in her bed in the morning in a cold sweat. But she didn't. Tara woke up as her frog self in the same clump of flowers on the banks of the same pond. Not daring to move in case she bumped into the evil frog or a predator, Tara spent the entire day lingering in the reeds. Then, as the sun started to set and it was time for her school to finish, Tara spotted a lone figure walking through the field, coming towards the pond. To her embarrassment, she saw that it was Kevin Stanton, a boy <laughs> from her school. Tara hopped out of the reeds and capered and croaked madly at his feet. Kevin was baffled, and Here's Tara another. began to feel utterly helpless and trapped. Let's face it, she thought miserably. I'm a frog forever. But to her surprise, Kevin bent down and picked her up. No. Are you a girl frog, he asked? Do you want a kiss? No. Tara wondered if he was only joking or if he actually meant it. But before Just she had to make sure nothing weird to any more croaking or capering, Kevin held her up to his face and kissed her. At once, there was a loud cry. And Tara found herself back to her human self in her pajamas. What happened to you? Oh, Gops damn, Kevin I wasn't kissing frogs, I was just, uh... Tara told him about her killing of the frog spawn, and the disfigured frogs coming back for revenge. She thought Kevin wouldn't believe her, and would think she was a nutcase, but having just seen what seemed to be an ordinary pond frog transform into a human being, he believed every word. Tara took him to the pond. There they saw the frog's eyes sticking up above the surface like a periscope, watching them both evilly some time had passed since the dreadful frog episode kevin and tara did walk past the pond a few times after but it didn't take long for them to start avoiding the pond on their way home from school for every time they passed it the same periscope like frog eyes would be poking above the water watching them eerily what the fuck was that story Alexander 3826. You're a fucking kind of a little weirdo, aren't you? Alright. I mean, it was weird. Are you a girl frog? Freeze, FBI! Smiley <laughs> Real name, face. Stephen King. As this is Ghostwriter. About ten years ago, name, there was a crazy a killer name. named Randy Newcomb. He was released from prison not so long ago but being in prison had made him even more crazy. They say that he moved to a house in Dallas, Texas, and went on a killing spree. And on each of the people he killed, he would paint a smiley face on their stomach in their blood. Unfortunately for Randy, he left too much evidence. When the police raided his house, everything was covered with smiley faces painted with blood, but there was no sign of Randy. It was as though he'd never existed. The people who sold the house to a soon-to-be wife never told her about the killer. The first night, the woman thought she heard something in her this? room. But she was too tired. What is this? Oh, it's a bear. The move okay, I see. Care. When she awoke the next morning, she found that her room was covered in smiley faces, painted with blood. That morning, when the police arrived, they said that they would keep a patrol car close by that night, but still no one told her about Randy. That night she heard the noise again in her room. This time she was quick to turn on the light and look. It was Randy, painting a smiley face on her floor. Where's he getting the blood from? <laughs> For a while, no one heard from the woman, so the police went to her house to see what was wrong. 
When no one opened the door, they rammed it in. Oh, well, god damn it. Stood there. He's like naked in another fucking... The other part. They're frozen in fear. For all over the house were smiley faces, painted in blood. And the woman's body hanging from no, the she's ceiling. she's naked. With a smiley face painted on her stomach. I don't know why she would have no been right there. Like Not ever again. Never again. Yeah, kind of looked like it. No, oh, this one's funny. The Big Toe. A boy was digging at the edge of the garden when he saw a big toe. He tried to pick it up, but it was stuck to something. So he gave it a good hard jerk and it came off in his hand. Then he heard something groan and scamper away. The boy took the toe into the kitchen and showed it to his mother. It looks nice and plump. She said, I'll put it in the soup and we'll have it What's for wrong supper. with your mom? That night, his father carved the toe into three pieces and they each had a piece. Then they did the dishes and when it got dark, they went to bed. You can't even tell what it the is. The boy fell asleep almost at once. But oh, in thanks the for the toe, the honey. Night, a sound awakened him. It was during medieval it was times, okay? Out in the street. People ate toes. It was a voice. And it was calling to him. Where is my toe? It groaned. When the boy heard that, he got very scared. But he thought, it doesn't know where I am. It will never find me. Then he heard the voice once more. <laughs> Only now it was closer. Where is my toe? It groaned. The boy pulled the blankets over his head and closed his eyes. I'll go to sleep, he thought. When I wake up, it will be gone. But soon he heard the back door open. And again he heard the voice. Where is my toe? It, it groaned. Dude, then just give him the toe. The boy heard footsteps move through the kitchen. Into the dining yeah, this is from room, scary stories. Into the living room, into the front hall. Then slowly they climbed the stairs. Closer and closer they came. Soon they were in the upstairs hall. Now they were outside his door. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. His door. Open, fucking shaking door with fear, yeah. he listened as the footsteps slowly moved through the dark toward his bed. Then they stopped. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. You've got it. Uh -huh. Got him. You get it? It was him. It was the guy who wanted the toe. Um. There's a weird one. I've never been able to find. I don't think this is it. That was from that anthology, but... I've never seen it done anywhere. I don't think this... Huh. We'll see. It was about, like, a guy driving. And... He stops. It's like a stormy night, and he's like, I need to stop for some reason. And he stops, and he goes into, like, an abandoned house on the side of the road. 
And did you hear he something? starts to hear something in the middle of the night while he's like sleeping in the abandoned house and then like a fucking weird thing like falls down the, the chimney a beautiful woman big black eyes long black hair skin as precious as ivory <laughs> yet her personality was the opposite of her beauty everyone hated her she was <laughs> rude snobbish and all around uppity she put a high price on her good looks and her master's degree in economics. Master's Despite degree in economics. In she did not have a boyfriend. The men she dated could not put Bro, up. What the fuck? She was always demanding this and that and always cussed out her boyfriends if something went wrong, regardless whether it had been their fault or not. Smilia became so desperate for human companionship that in her haste she married a man named Shan. <laughs> the guy's fucking man face. With a good temper. The only problem with him was that he was as deaf as a doornail. To Smilia, this was an advantage, as she could curse him all she wanted, and he would never reply back. One night, as the two lay in bed, Smilia became very thirsty. What's her name? She went downstairs for a glass of water, and while there, she decided to get a snack, some leftover fish from the night's dinner. But while she was gulping down the fish Smilia. in the water, a bone got lodged tight in her throat. She spluttered and coughed and clawed at her throat, trying to get the bone out, but nothing. It's just like a movie in the background. We have to start with what we are and what we have. Our own minds. Shit. 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 This is the narrator. Croaked, but he obviously did not come down. Smelia sunk to the floor, her lungs craving for air. And then finally, she became silent and still. Oh, Smelia. Upstairs, Shane suddenly opened his eyes and sat up, and a loud voice said, Smilia, did you hear something? <laughs> wow. I wasn't expecting it, but... The Walk My uncle was walking down a lonely dirt road one day. He came upon a man who was also walking down that road. The man looked at my uncle, and my uncle looked at the man. The man was scared of my uncle, and my uncle was scared of that man. But they kept on walking, and it began to get dark. The man looked at my uncle, and my uncle... And I looked in the, the closet, man. and I the saw the principal and the teacher, uncle. and then I my saw a baby. Was very scared of that man. And the baby looked at me. But they kept on walking, and they came to a big woods. It was getting darker. The man looked at my uncle, and my uncle looked at the man. The man was really scared of my uncle, and my uncle was really scared of that man. But they kept on walking, and deep into the woods they went. It was getting darker. And the man looked at my uncle, and my uncle looked at the man. The man was terrible scared of my uncle, and my <laughs> uncle was terrible like scared of- the fucking Resident Evil 1 zombie. <laughs> <laughs> but they kept on walking, and deep into the woods they went. It was getting darker, and the man looked at my uncle, and my uncle looked at the man. The man was terrible scared of my uncle, and my uncle was terrible scared of- ah! Got him. <laughs> ah! Hmm. I'm looking for a short one. Look out behind you.
The New Neighbor There was a young woman who lived in a small town named Jessica Peters. Jessica didn't get out of the house much, so she didn't have many friends. One day there was a knock at her door, and it was a man who looked to be in his early twenties. Hello, um, he said. Is my that... name is Rick. I just moved into town and was coming over Sergeant to Patrick see my Bateman? new neighbor. My name's Jessica. Nice to meet you, Rick, she said in a shy tone. Would you care to come over for my housewarming party tomorrow night? Rick asked. Yes, I would, she replied. Would you like to come in now for some coffee? Sure, Rick said, and he walked in and took a seat on the couch. Jessica walked into the kitchen to get a I cup saw that of new coffee. episode of Rick and Morty. When she came back, Rick was gone. It wasn't actually that bad. That's odd, she thought. Yeah, that's pretty odd. The next morning, while she was off for a walk, Jessica fucking decided gonna murder to stop you. at Rick's house to say hello. She knocked on the door and was surprised to see it wasn't Rick who answered, but a man she didn't recognize. It's this fucking guy. Can I help you, miss? He asked. I'm looking for Rick, she said. He looked at her with a strange face. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but he has been dead for over ten years. It's the same I fucking this house story! Just after his death. What? Ghosted. But he was just at my house yesterday, Jessica said, frightened. He died the day he moved into this house, in fact. I'm sorry to say that Rick killed himself after finding his beloved wife, Jessica, had died in their bed. <gasps> what does it mean, though? What does it really mean? All right, let's watch one last thing. I'm probably going to take off, I think. I'm pretty tired. And like I said, I'm like out of energy. I'm going to go chill. Let's watch one last thing. Oh, I know what we can watch. I know exactly what we could watch. Items are strange and smart. What the fuck does that mean? Look at these wild ass intros. Whoops. Is there no sound? <laughs> yeah, this is this guy ghost hunting, yelling at himself. Whoa. What the way that looks at the bottom? That looks like there's like some smoke or something. <laughs> what? Fucking stool. Oh, no. 
吓我呀！操你妈的！啊！哎呀我操！哎呀我操！啊啊啊！我操！啊！我操！操你妈的！我操！看着我！哎！哎！哎！我操！我操你妈的！过来呀！操你妈的！我操！ Rotating chandelier. 啥鸡巴声？谁？谁？嗯？哎呦，又我操！ Oh yeah, look at that thing. Wind energy. Disappearing lanterns. Invite to take a shower. Hey, hey, I'm so sorry. Look at that. What is he saying, Chani Ma? When he says that, Chani Ma. What does that mean? He says it all the time. Hey, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man. Ah, I'm telling you, man. Hey, I'm telling you, man. Like what the fuck, maybe? Oh, fuck your mother, Johnny Ma. That's like a nice little spot. Looks like someone stays there. Hey, hey, I'm telling you. Not like racist or anything, is it? Right. I want to make sure I know what I'm saying before I say it. You want to get it? So do they take a shower together? What's going on? Jumping model, model. Wait, what? Costume model scare me. There's a bracket under it. 嘿嘿嘿，我嘿，我操，嘿，我操 ！Oh shit, just like moved. <laughs> 嘿嘿嘿，我嘿，我操，嘿，我操 ！That is pretty cool. Number eight, an industrious iron. What?
You know, shut him up, I will. I'm talking nonsense there. Not him, I'll young la. Where's the light? All the audience needs to you in. Then you are the quarter, really. Huh? Hmm. Sorry, airborne. I don't. I have no stories tonight. I got like no energy for it. To take a rain check on that. The runaway of rogue monkeys. What? Where are the monkeys? The monkeys gone. Where are the monkeys? He's stopping on them. <laughs> that sound was good. What <laughs> 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 No, oh, those monkeys. Oh you tear the cannon cloth apart. What if you hide it there? What? I'm back again. What? 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 Oh my god. It's gonna come back, isn't it? Oh no. What holy man? Hey! You hold it now! They put it on a leash. Whoa, it like left the room. Yo, it like walked away. What? That looks sick. It's because it's so low resolution, you can't really see what's happening, but it does look cool. Now it's not real, but. What's <laughs>
I won. Oh my god. But how? But how? Yeah, it's all live streams too, so it's pretty intricate. Ghosts are real. It's your proof. Yeah, that channel's called Outdoor Xiaolong. Xiaolong. Very good.